Hi everyone and welcome back. Today I have a very fun video combining foiling with matching dyes and matching stencils. And my Instagram account is actually joining the fun with Pink Fresh Studio along with more designers. If you are on Instagram, make sure to go there and check it out for a chance to see lots and lots of inspiration as well as to win lots of prizes. For today I will play with the folk art birds. They come in a stamp and you can see that beautiful design with the two focal points which are the birds. There is also a foiling plate available that matches perfectly with the stamp and I will be playing with that today. There is also a die available that cuts out all those intricate designs so you can put them back together or even you can rearrange them any way you like. And finally, there is a set of uh, stencils that match perfectly with the design. You can see that it comes with different shapes, so you can place one on top of the other and just by using one ink for every one of those stencils, you will end up with a colored image in no time. And I find it super fun to have the option to get the same design in a stamp, in a die, in a foiling plate or even in a stencil. So this way you can mix and match your favorite products and go to town. For today I will work with three of the four products, I will not use the stamp at all and I will create two cards. For my first card I'm working on a navy blue cardstock I'm placing on top this silver foil and then I will place on top of that the blade. I am securing all three of those layers with a piece of low tack tape just to make sure that they are not going to move on me and I'm going to place them on my foiling platform and let them warm up. I am using my Spellbinders Glimmer Machine here and I did press the button, I'm waiting for that green light to stop blinking and while that is working there and it's warming up my plate, I'm going to prepare the panel that I want to foil for the second card. So while I have that Glimmer Machine ready to go and warmed up, I like to do all the foiling in the beginning for all the cards that I'm planning to create. Now I'm going to run the first uh, panel through my die cutting machine and uh, this is the one that I created with the blue navy cardstock and I absolutely love the result. The contrast of uh, the silver against that black navy cardstock is just stunning. And the design is so beautiful, all you have to do for such a panel is to just add a sentiment on top. So anyway, I'm going to move on and do one more panel again using rose gold uh, as a foil. And uh, I'm uh, working on a white cardstock this time. On my navy blue panel I do have just a little bit of overfoiling, nothing I cannot fix with a sand eraser, just going gently over those areas. And now the other uh, panel is uh, warmed up, so let me run it through my die cutting machine. I always like to run it through a couple of times, this ensures for a good impression, and look how gorgeous it looks. And let's start with the first card for today, for that one I'm using a um, rectangle die that has a lovely stitching all around, I'm going to run it through my die cutting machine, this way I do have this panel which is slightly smaller than the standard card and at the same time it adds a lovely finishing touch at the edges. Now I'm going to ink up this panel and for that I'm using faded jeans which is a shade darker than the actual color that I have on my background. This is going to darken up the edges and it is going to make it as if it is glowing at the center. This is a technique that I absolutely love and um, the more darker the borders become, the brighter the center will look. I'm also going to add an even darker color, this is black suit, again distress ink, and I'm going to go all around the edges again, but I'm not going as far towards the center as I did with the blue shade. You can uh, do this technique with any colored cardstock, you can even work that on a pink, as long as you use darker shades on the edges. And you can see how lovely it looks. Distress ink doesn't cover up the foiling, all it does is just stays on top of that, so just use a clean cloth and go over the foiling to remove any excess ink from the top. And now I'm going to do some more foiling, I'm only uh, interested in the part where those two birds are, again I'm using the same foil, but uh, in this case just white cardstock. And here is the finished look, I'm going to peel off the backing and you can see the lovely foiling that I have here. 
I am going to use the tie and to cut out those two birds. The idea is to have the birds as my focal point on the blue card. You can go ahead and color them if you like. I'm going to stay with blues and whites for this first card. So I'm going to work a little bit on the background before I stick those birds on top. And I'm going to bring in the stencils. I will use one of the stencils on top of the design. And this is going to allow me for a really quick application of an ink. You can go with Distress Oxide inks because they work great on top of dark cardstock. But uh, in this case, as I want to have only tone on tone look and uh, blues and whites, I'm going to go with white ink, which I'm going to apply with a blending tool all over the place. I did secure the stencil on top of my panel with some washi tape at the back, so I'm sure that I'm not going to make a mess, by the way. Again, in this case, the foiling resists the ink, so although it is going to look dull when you apply it, after it is dry, just go over it with a clean cloth and you will see that the shine is going to come back. Now, in my case, and since I used chalk ink, it takes ages to dry, so I am going to do the cleanup with my cloth before I remove the stencil. This way I will not have any smudges all over the place. Now it's time to remove the stencil, and I absolutely love the result. It looks so elegant, and you can still see the shine coming through those white inked areas. And now finally it's time to put everything together. I'm going to place the panel on top of a standard card that's four and a quarter by five and a half. And you can see I do have a small border all around. I'm also going to pop the birds on top of the design. And I did use foam tape at the back so they are dimensional. And finally you can add a sentiment. I went with a thin strip that says I am thankful for your friendship. And I think that this card could also make a beautiful uh, anniversary card or wedding card as well, depending on the colors that you choose to go with. Now I'm going to add a finishing touch here. I will bring up my white Nouveau drops and I'm going to add small dots at the end of all these branches. I think that it brings lovely the whites and the blues together. It adds some dimension as well as sign. And you can see here some close-up photos. Just like always, you will find the full list of everything that I used down below in the description area. And don't forget to go over to my Instagram account for a chance to win lots of prizes. And now let's move on and turn the second panel into a card, this time more colorful one. I'm starting with a light shade of green and I'm going to apply it over the stencil. And although this is a very intricate design that would take you a lot of time to color with your pencils, your watercolors or even your markers, just by using the stencils, it goes super fast. Now on this stencil you will find all the foliage that you need and uh, there is also the two wings which I tried to avoid here because I want the wings to be a different color than green. Now I'm going to switch to another stencil and this time I'm using a darker shade of green. And this is where I got smarter, so I'm going to bring in my Misty and you will find how I'm going to use it for a super quick application, which is going to allow you for mass producing cards such as this one. So I aligned here the card with the stencil and then I made sure that the stencil was completely aligned with the bottom corner of my Misty. I'm going to place some washi tape to keep the card in place. And then every time I switch stencils, all I have to do is to just align them at the corner and they will fall on top of the image perfectly. So by using this stencil, you are adding the shading on the leaves and that's why I'm using a darker shade of green. That's another stencil that is going to help you add the color on the flowers. I am starting with a dark pink here and then I will switch stencils and use a lighter pink to complete the look. I always find it super fun to work with matching products and uh, in this case this design is so lovely. I'm absolutely in love with it and I think that you cannot uh, go wrong with such a beautiful design. Always your cars are going to look just stunning. Now for the birds I decided to go with uh, oranges and yellows. And if you switch stencils you will find that there is another one for the belly and another one for the wings. So you can easily mix and match colors without making a mess for the birds. 
And again, remember when you finish inking, just clean up the whole thing with a clean cloth, making sure that uh, you don't leave any excess ink on top of the foiling. Now I'm going to bring in again the matching die, I'm going to align it, secure it at the back with some low tack tape and run it through my die cutting machine. This way I will end up having all those intricate designs separately so that I can place them on top of my card if I want completely differently, however I decided to follow the exact same design. Just for some extra touch I'm running one uh, more panel here, this is vanilla cardstock and I'm going to cut it out so that I can stick that directly on top of my card base. This is going to allow for a tone on tone look where you have the panel in vanilla but all the negative is bright white. This is not something that you have to do but it really adds that extra something when you see it up close. And now of course I have to add a dimension on this card so I'm going to use teeny tiny foam tape pieces at the back of all those elements and stick them in place. It does take a little bit of time, I'm not going to lie, but the result is absolutely worth it. For the bottom of the branches, since they are so thin, of course I didn't bother to add the foam tape there, I just used uh, glue to stick them down. And I'm adding here the final pieces, all the bits and pieces are down by using foam tape at the back and you can see the lovely result. When you tilt that you can see the dimension and at the same time you can see the bright cardstock coming through from the bottom. So these were the projects for today, I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired, just like always you will find the full list of supplies down below in the description area and don't forget to visit my Instagram account as you will find there a fun hope with lots of giveaways. Thank you all so much for visiting today and I hope you'll all have a lovely weekend.